this we looked at form A of the AP chemistry test, but today we're going to be looking at the second form, which we're looking at five more questions in all. If you like these videos or find them informative, please be sure to like and subscribe. With that, let's get started on our quest. Alright, so we're asked to answer the following questions about the solubility and reactions of the ionic compounds M hydroxide 2 and uh, metal carbonate, where M represents an unidentified metal. And we're asked to identify the charge of the M ion and the ionic compounds above. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Well, we have MOH2, right? So OH is obviously a minus. And we have two of those, so it's going to be 2 mi minus 2, so the M is going to be a plus 2. And our carbonate, carbonate is also a 2 minus, so our metal is again going to be a plus 2. Right, that's what it seems like. So our answer is just going to be a plus 2 for the charge. And we can move on to the next question. At 25 degrees Celsius, a saturated solution of metal hydroxide has a pH of 9.15. Calculate the molar concentration of OH minus in the saturated solution. This is part one. And so pH is 9.15, so the pOH is going to be 14 minus that, which is going to be, so pOH is going to be 4. 0.85 and then of course our actual concentration of hydroxide then is going to be 10 to the negative 4.85 which pulling out our calculator is going to be is going to be 1 Take it. Well, we have uh, 1.41 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. Is that's our concentration of hydroxide in the saturated solution. All right, then let's let's keep going. We're being asked to write a solubility part of a constant expression for MOH2. Well, let's think about how we're going to go about doing that. So the metal is going to dissociate into two different hydroxides, meaning that our KSP is going to KSP for solubility product is going to be a concentration of the metal 2 plus. times the, the hydroxide, something hydroxide squared, and that's going to be our solubility product, that's going to be our solubility product constant, right? Now, let's keep thinking about what we're going to do next. All right, so in part three, we're trying to find the value of the solubility product constant, KSP. And let's think about how we're going to go about trying to find that. Well, we have our concentration of hydroxide. We know the concentration of hydroxide. It's what we calculated to be 1.41 times 10 to the negative 5. Right? That is our concentration of hydroxide. What we don't have is a concentration of the identified metal. That's what we need right now. That's what we don't have. So how how do we rem uh, how do we remedy that? Well, we see that it, it's a saturated solution, right? So basically, we put in some amount of metal hydroxide and we left it there, right? And now it's associated. So we have an amount of hydroxide and an amount of metal. And the amount of hydroxide is going to be double the amount of metal, since we in each co each, each uh, molecule of metal hydroxide we have two hydroxides and one metal. So there's going to be double the amount of hydroxide in there, right? Then metal. So the concentration of metal is just going to be x over two. 
where x is the concentration of hydroxide. And that's how we're going to write it. We're going to write this at the, as x over 2 for the metal times x squared. That way we don't have to write out the 1.41 a bunch. That is going to be our KSD. And now that's going to be x cubed divided by 2, where x is our hydroxide, the 1.41, which that's negative. We take that, we raise it to the third power, we divide it by 2, and we get that the answer here is 1.41 times, times 10 to the negative 10. That is going to be our KSP expression. And we can move on to part C. All right, let's move on to part C. So for the metal carbonate, MCO3, the value of the solubility product constant, KSP, is 7.4 times 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. On the basis of this information and your results in part B, which compound, metal hydroxide or metal carbonate, has the greater mol molar solubility in water at 25 degrees Celsius? All right, so let's think about, so we already have the molar solubility for the metal hydroxide, right? It's that 1.41 times 10 to the negative 5, right? That initial thing that we found, or that is what, that's going to be our solubility for hydroxide, and we divide that by 2 to get the what would that be, like 0 0.7 times 10 to the negative 5, or 7 times 10 to the negative 6. And that's going to be our molar solubility of the dehydroxide. Now we have to find the molar solubility of the metal carbonate. So the KSP for metal carbonate is just going to be the metal times concentration of metal times concentration of the carbonate. And that's going to be 7.4 times 10 to the negative 4. And made 14, sorry. So we just take the square root of this to get the molar solubility because this part equals that part. Right? These two parts are equal. Right? So 7.4 times 10 to the negative 14. We take the square root of that. Square root. Of 7.4 times 10 to the negative 14, and we get 2.7, 2.7 times 10 to the negative 7, which is less than our, which is less than the 10 to the or 1.1 or 0 0.7 times 10 to the negative 5, or 7 times 10 to the negative 6, which is our molar solubility of metal hydroxide, which means that the, the greater molar solubility is that the metal hydroxide has greater molar solubility. This, or they asked us to pick which one has the greater metal uh, molar solubility. It is the metal hydroxide. We can move on to the next part. All right, next part here it is. Uh, metal carbonate decomposes at high temperatures, as shown in the reaction represented below. Metal carbonate goes to me uh, metal oxide plus carbon dioxide. So we're told that a sample of metal car carbonate is placed in a previously evacuated container heated to 423 Kelvin and allowed to come to equilibrium. Some solid metal carbonate remains in the container. The value of Kp for the reaction at 423 Kelvin is 0 0.0012. Write the equilibrium constant expression for the Kp of the reaction. That's part one. Let's see. So Kp, Kp, let's see. So we have the pressure of carbon dioxide. And then, well, a metal doesn't, a uh, solid doesn't have a pressure. So the metal oxide and the metal carbonate are both solid, so they're not going to get included. So our KP expression is just the pressure of carbon dioxide. That is it. That's the whole bit right there. Remember the pressure in the atmosphere of carbon dioxide in the container at equilibrium at 120 Kelvin. Well, this is equal to KP. The pressure is equal to KP. KP is equal to 0 0.0012. So our answer here 
is just going to be 0 0.001 0 0.0012 atmospheres and we can go to part 3 of part 2 and in part 3 we are told we're told to indicate whether the value is delta Q for the reaction at 423 Kelvin is positive, negative, or zero. And we're asked to justify our answer. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is going to write an equation. Alright, so we know that delta G is standard equals negative RT ln K. Alright, that's the equation we know. And we know that k is less than 1. So this part is then going to be, this part is going to be less than 0. It's going to be negative. So negative rt times a negative is going to be a positive, which means that g, delta g right here, is going to be positive. Right, so our answer is that it's going to be positive. Positive. For justification, we would just enunciate that we have our k is less than 1, so l and k is less than 0. We have that negative thrown in there, so when we multiply that out using this equation right here, we get that delta G standard is going to be positive. And that is it for that question. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that video or found it informative. Be sure to tune next time when we continue looking at AP Chemistry FRQs, and I'll see you later.